this is Stone Cold Export and today we are building a NAS from old parts that I have laying around. So the parts include 16GB of DDDR3 memory, a 10,000 RPM a hard drive for the operating system, a stock AMD cooler which we are going to uh, switch the fans, and uh, four 1TB hard drives and two 500GB hard drives. This is the motherboard we're using, it's an Asus Crosshair 4 Extreme and we're going to pair it with one of these CPUs, probably the FX3350 and we're going to have 16GB of DDR3 memory and we have 6 regular hard drives we're going to use for data and a 10,000 RPM hard drive for the operating system but we're going to start by swapping the fans on these two stock AMD coolers Of jeans, a shirt or two. We didn't pack as if we weren't and going back. It doesn't matter if it's true. I've got a feeling love will give us what we lack. The world is waiting up. The world is waiting half a step beyond our door. And if it's not enough. I wanna see the stuff the world has got in store uh, I wanna take it all in, I'm falling The cityscape by night, wanna catch in my photos Where you go, every corner twice as bright There'll be my treasures forever When I can't hold you tight, I'll see the Stockholm lights The Stockholm lights, the Stockholm lights 
Take it all in, I'm falling The cityscape by night Wanna catch my photos Where you go, every corner twice as bright They'll be my treasures forever When I can't hold you tight I'll see the Stockholm lights The Stockholm lights The Stockholm lights our build and as you can see here I actually went with Trudina's core instead of scale I tried scale but it was really buggy for me uh, so I had to revert to core instead and uh, so the reason I wanted to test scale was that I wanted to, to, to play with GPU pass through and that's uh, Debian based and it should allow you to pass through a GPU to a virtual machine but instead, I went with Proxmox and I installed Trudinus Core as a virtual machine on top of Proxmox. And one of the drawbacks of doing that is, of course, that you are limited by, uh, you're somewhat limited by the memory because, you know, I wanted to allocate some memory to the, the hypervisor itself and some memory to Trudinus Core as well as some memory to uh, perhaps one or two other virtual machines. So I went with 12 gigs for this virtual machine and... Uh, I, that left me with around 2 gigs to play with for other virtual machines as well as 2 gigs for the hypervisor itself but we have two pools here pool 1 is a RAID 0 configuration with the two 500 gig drives and you can see it's unhealthy but uh, it's really not important there's nothing important on those drives so if one of them fails it doesn't matter pool number 2 is a RAID C2 configuration so we have two drives for parity and uh, as you could see in the montage, one of the drives already has some smart errors. I think it was five relocated sectors. And I'm going to keep an eye on that. So if that increases, we'll have to swap out the drive. But we won't lose any data because we have two drives for parity. And that basically means any uh, two drives of D4 can fail uh, without uh, data loss. So we do have some redundancy there. It also says we are connected to a 10 gig Ethernet, but that's not true. It's a 1 gig connection, it just says 10 gig because it's running in a virtual machine. But I wanted to show you power consumption uh, with this configuration because power consumption is of course something you have to consider when you're building a NAS that's going to run 24-7 or at least a considerable amount of hours each day. And we are using an FX8250 which is not really known for being an efficient uh, chip. But let's bring up the Windows 10 virtual machine and see how much power we are actually using. So at the same time this is running, we also have a Windows 10 virtual machine running that monitors power consumption through the uh, Corsair ARM 1000i power supply. And here you can see we are running about 150 watts under idle. That's total system power consumption. That's power draw from the wall. And we have had a minimum of 120 uh, watts power draw from the wall. And then there's 64 watts on the 12 volt rail, which is what the CPU is running at. And that's not too bad. The peak was 230 watts and that's what was while running a 4k transcode uh, with plex uh, which is hopefully not something i'm going to do very often but uh, that actually loaded up all the cores in the cpu and it pulled 230 watts there's no gpu in this system by the way uh, so we are running gpu less so that doesn't contribute to the power draw it's 
basically just the CPU and all the hard drives, of course. So we have on the wall to the FX8350 and it's running at 3.8 gigahertz. And I think it was running at 1.18 volts during the, the Plex 4 transcode, uh, which is not, it's basically pretty low, but it's, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. So at 12 volt rail, we are, are hovering around like 85 watts while idling. That's pretty decent. We are also running no load line calibration, which, uh, which uh, helps the voltage under load. So it will drop more than it would otherwise. So one of the reasons we went with this motherboard was that it has three SATA connectors, uh, SATA controllers. So on the rear, we have one SATA controller for the external uh, SATA port, and that's actually where the boot drive is connected to right now. So the boot drive is outside the computer. <laughs> it's on top of the computer. It doesn't look very good, but it's functioning, and that's the important part, in my opinion, anyway. And inside uh, the, the case, we have the other SATA connectors that's hooked up to the south bridge of the motherboard. That's the red ones on the motherboard. Uh, that's six SATA connectors hooked up to the south bridge, and then there's a separate SATA controller, again, for the other two black connectors uh, on the motherboard. And the I had one issue, and that was that when I hooked all the drives up to the six native SATA ports, only four of them would appear in the uh, virtual machine in Trunas Core, actually also in Trunas Core. And even though we had passed through the entire, entire SATA controller. So what I had to do was I had to disconnect two of the hard drives and connect them to the black uh, SATA connectors instead and pass through uh, that controller. And that seems to be working fine. I am planning a follow-up video to this where we upgrade the system uh, because I'm very curious how a Ryzen 5 1600 would perform in this uh, computer with power consumption and everything. And then we probably will be using the X470 Tai Chi motherboard, which means that my personal system would have to go back to an Intel 10600K, but that's that's fine. I don't really notice much difference anyway. I mean, I know the 5600X is the faster CPU, but in day-to-day -day workloads, I don't really notice it all that much. But uh, using the 1600 and the X470 Tai Chi uh, would be a very interesting combination. I think the power consumption should be a lower. We will also be undervolting that, of course. And the reason we want to use the X470 Tai Chi is that it has eight SATA ports, where six of them are attached to the native controller, and the other two is to a separate SATA controller. Uh, so I'm hoping to attach the boot drive to the separate SATA controller and the six data drives to the native controller, and hopefully I'll be able to pass through all six drives, not only four of them, to the virtual machine. But we will see when the time comes. Uh, the other bonus of the X470 Tai Chi, of course, is that it has two M.2 slots, uh, even though one of them are M.2 uh, are PCIe Express 2.0 by 4, so it's going to be uh, a bit a bit slower, but it should be fine. But that's the video for another day, so we'll see how the upgrade goes when the time comes. And uh, that's pretty much all I had for you for now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, farewell.